Resident Evil, the franchise that put survival horror on the map. It wasn't the first, but it's by far the most popular with its own movie franchise. I still have that laser moment from the Resident Evil movies ingrained into my head. I watched it on this huge CRT TV at the auditorium in elementary school of all places. I was like 8 or 9? Not sure how the school thought that was a good idea. I was introduced to the games later and I played all the mainland ones after 4 besides 6. 5 was the least recent one that I played so I thought it was a good game to go back to. And I also got a suggestion to try out a game from this franchise. Decided to dust off my old PS3 and see how this game holds up nowadays. In this game, you play as Chris Redfield, one of the main characters from the first game, who has been sent by the BSAA, a global anti-bioweapon unit, to go into Africa and stop some terrorists from using bioweapons. While there, you are partnered with Shiva, 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 I forget, to help you get to your destination. I do like this whole world thing they got going on. Resident Evil 4 was in Spain, and this one is in Africa. Because where in the world is that zombie virus? Yeah. The gameplay is very similar to Resident Evil 4. They have over the shoulder tank controls, movements are stiff, and you're not able to run and shoot at the same time. It does take a little getting used to, but once I got the hang of them, I started to like them again. It adds to the tensions in fight when you're forced to stand your ground. They have other control types, but none of them let you run and gun. These controls complement the shooting very well. You have a little red dot to aim with. Because of the angle, enemies who are farther away are much harder to aim at and the weapon even has a little sway to them to make it more difficult. It definitely adds to the tension since enemies have a clear and long animation for you to take advantage. If you try to take more than you can chew, you will regret it. Since the aiming is hard, it's emphasizing hitting enemies in specific body parts. The head does critical damage and has this satisfying crunchy noise. Oh, that sounds so good. It's like some grotesque, oddly satisfying SAMR sound. Hey, if some people enjoy popping zits, I can enjoy this. Shooting specific body parts can cause enemies to stagger. If you stagger the zombies in a specific way, you could walk up to them and just rock their shit, boy. I think my favorite is knocking an enemy down and just splattering their zombies' heads with a well placed stomp. I feel bizarre for these zombies. Imagine getting hit by this guy. Look at those biceps. He eats raw egg and he punches a fucking boulder. Have you ever tried punching a boulder? It probably won't end well. It's a bit odd that they teach you about the melee hit rather late in the game. It's a very helpful way to save up resources. There's a huge variety of enemies and some require more bullets than others. The ones without a weapon or the knife throwers can be staggered easily and meleeed, unlike the big chungus over here. As the game progresses, the enemies get tougher with different types of enemies. It makes sense. We have a fly boy, a bad boy, and whatever the fuck this is. The more interesting ones were the ones who wore masks that protected them from a few bullets to the head. Once broken, a few bullets to the head will kill them, but you can stagger them and they melee to destroy the mask which lets you use fewer bullets. I thought that was pretty cool giving you this balance. But later on enemies get a little ridiculous. It's like these zombies went into a meeting and figured out the best way to take out the player. Bullets. Is that an assault rifle? Is that a minigun? Is that a freaking bazooka? What's next? Holy fucking shit. Are these even zombies anymore? To answer that question, they're not what you or I would call zombies. There are people that are enhanced by the Uroboros virus. Albert Wesker from the first game is back and he is here to bring the Uroboros virus to everyone. The virus is meant as the next evolution of humanity and only those who are worthy will survive it while those who don't turn into this black blob of a creature. There is a bit of hypocrisy on Wesker's side since he needs to inject himself with some serum to keep the virus inside of him stable. Anything to do with Wesker felt like I was watching like The Matrix. The most interesting thing about the story to me was the files you found. It helped you tell you what happened in the area you were in. 
They're not necessary. But reading these files were fun. You usually find them where you have to go looking for items. Although the mats are linear in the game, they have vases to break, items to pick up, or paths a bit out of the way to go to. One thing I didn't like was as the game went on, it got away from survival horror and more to a third person shooter. They kept the QTE which doesn't really add much to this game in my opinion. Ah, mash the button to run really fast. A classic event. Wait, did they just crisscross jump? What was the point of that? They made the game more of a third person shooter when they added the enemies with guns, which also added cover based mechanics. You mainly stood behind cover and popped out. It kind of took away from the gameplay I like from this game. You have this horde of enemies coming after you and you have to navigate this area with tight paths and window openings to defend yourself. Do you line them up in a small line and shotgun all of them? Or stagger one and melee to try to hit more than one? Or throw a grenade at a horde? It doesn't help that certain zombies just had unbreakable armor. Sure, now I have to aim at specific parts. Or it's a wasted bullet. But why is the head, the weak point, have a permanent armor? I can still kill with it, but it just kind of sucks. I don't want my crunchy noise. The whole end of the game felt kind of odd. Besides the bug zombie, I thought they were clever. Making you hit their chest when it opens up. And if you don't, it does this hazy mist, making it even harder to hit them. It has this tension waiting and making sure you hit them. But if you don't, they make it towards you very slowly and this one hit kill move. Something else that was added to the game was co-op. If you're already playing as Chris Redfield, your co-op buddy will play as Shiva. If you play online, a random person will take control of Shiva. If you play offline, another person can pick up the controller to play as her and if you're offline by yourself, you'll be controlled by the AI. I played online with an AI, and they're not the best. Uh, you okay there, buddy? In the end, I used them as a pack mule with some guns for them to use. The main reason I used them as pack mule is that the inventory system was also changed. Since this is a co-op game, it will be rather annoying to have to pause the whole game just so your partner can satisfy their OCD tendencies fixing the inventory. To overcome this issue, they chose to simplify the inventory. It's just 9 squares with each item taking up a square. Each item has a certain amount it can hold per square. The issue this caused is that you carry way less than what you want. The middle squares on the outside are mapped to the d-pad, which I would presume to put my weapons there for quick access. While you can't put a weapon on each one, you need ammo for each one as well. Meaning you'll have to use up 8 of your 9 slots just for your guns. The whole point is to share a single inventory with your partner and also the guns as well. You can have a shotgun while your partner has a sniper rifle. Sure, you and your partner can use the same type of gun, but there is only a limited amount of ammo for that gun type to go around. This will be fine with an actual person because you can coordinate with them. But with an AI, they just shoot whatever is aggro. Which in their defense, would be better than them shooting indiscriminately. The last thing you want is an AI provoking the big scary thing before you're prepared. If you thought Resident Evil 4 was scary, well this game is more or less the same. It's still cool how the game is able to freak you out, even during the day, if you want to call this daytime. Facing this guy with a chainsaw in these narrow areas where you have to bypass him if you get cornered which can happen easily by the way, was probably the most panic I've felt in a while. Run away, run away, fuck, 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 shit, I'm out of bullets, shit, I'm out of bullets, I'm out of bullets. This is a dead end, dead end, dead end. Finally, I got him. Then, my biggest fear at the moment came to life. Now what? No, 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 it can't be. Another one? Even if I did die, it's not that big of a deal. When you beat a chapter, you're able to put extra items in storage. Every time you start a chapter, or when you die, you're able to pull out anything from storage. If you're having issues with a section, it's time to pull out the big boys. It was made this way to go alongside the online co-op of this game. The game wants you to replay it, and one of the ways they do this is with a score. I never cared too much about a high score, but it is there if you like getting that A or S rank in certain games. 
Why is S rank higher than A anyways? The other way they incentivize to replay the game is with these BSAA symbols. They're hidden throughout the game and shooting them will give you points to unlock things. You can unlock figurines of characters in the game, outfits, and even these nifty filters you can put over the game if you want. There's also mercenary mode, which I might take a closer look at another day in one of my other series. Games of games. <coughs> Ooh, that was weird. If I was to describe this game, it would be Resident Evil 4 if Ashley had a gun. That would have been great, but the changes to accommodate for the co-op takes away a bit of what makes Resident Evil the franchise it is. The inventory was changed since you can't stop the whole game just for some inventory management. And the survival part is kind of out the window when you can store items to use if you die. The cover mechanic was probably the thing I didn't like the most, but this was done towards the end and it wasn't as prevalent throughout the game. Most of the issues I had with this game would have been solved if I played with someone else, besides the whole cover based shooting thing. I still had fun with this game, and I would love to see more Resident Evil co op games. I think this game should have been more of a spin off instead of a main title series. I would say if you want to play this game single player, play Resident Evil 4 instead. It's almost the same thing. And if you and a buddy both like Resident Evil, then I highly recommend playing this one together. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to thank the Attackerman for giving me this suggestion. It was fun playing through this game. If you have any suggestion on a game or game franchise I should make a video on, either for this series or another, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I thank you so much for watching and tune in next time.